Okay, we're gonna start it. Okay, we're gonna introduce ourselves again. So I'm Abby, I'm the education chair and I'm in my fifth year of biosite. Nicole? Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Nicole. I'm the campus chairperson. Um, I'm in my fifth year of chem med sci. Um, and I'm very bad at technology. Uh, I'm Jake Elizabeth. This is my final year. Well, fifth year. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy. I'm third year biology major. Hey, everyone. I'm Divine. Um, I'm with the Human Studies Program, and this is the Center for Student Education. And I'm a research. I'm Nicole, and I'm also from the Human Studies Program, and I'm also from the Human Studies Program. Yeah, I'll go to the Human Studies Program. Here we go. All right. So, what is Global Brigades? It's the largest student led nonprofit. And we work to empower communities in the rural areas of our partner countries by providing support for them to reach their development goals in a sustainable way. Our mission is to inspire, mobilize, and collaborate with communities to achieve their own health and economic goals. Our vision is to have millions of empowered community members with the resources and capacity they need to thrive. And our values include empowerment, our holistic approach, scalability, sustainability, financial transparency, and collaboration. So Global Brigades has 684 partner communities in our six partner countries, and those include Honduras, Panama, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Ghana, and Greece. Global Brigades is com comprised of seven chapters that work on different aspects in a community according to the holistic model in order to create a self-sustainable community. The main focus is sustainable development through implementation of the holistic model. So GB started as a medical mission to, um, of Marquette University students to Honduras. And it was founded when the students from that trip returned to the States and realized that only addressing a community's medical needs was just a band-aid fix for more systemic issues in the community. From this realization, a few of these students founded Global Brigades and derived our holistic model from the UN Sustainable Development Goals 3, 6, and 8 in order to provide a balanced approach to our work with communities on their development. We have graduated 43 of our 684 partner communities to empowered status. This means that they've reached the goals they've set for themselves and have met Global Brigade's six goals for empowered status. These six goals align with the UN Sustainable Development Goals or SDG. So goals one and two align with the UN SDG three, which is good health and well-being. Goals three and four align with the UN SDG six, which is clean water and sanitation. And then goals five and six align with the UN SDG eight, which is good jobs and economic growth. Okay, so the chapters that we have at UVic are the Medical and Dental Brigade. And this was founded as a medical chapter in 2007. This year, our medical chapter will be traveling to Guatemala from May 7th to 14th. Engineering is our newest chapter and that was founded in 2019. And at UVic, we have helped over 7,750 patients access healthcare, and over 700 people have benefited from water systems that we've designed. So some of our dormant chapters are business and their goal is to help educate community members on the importance of saving, 
investments, financial literacy, and marketing through workshops. And then we have water, which put the plans from a previous engineering brigade into action and helped build a water system. And then we have public health, which builds eco stoves and hygiene stations. So legal empowerment is the only type of brigade UVic has not participated in. On a legal empowerment brigade, you would learn about the Honduran legal system and help with legal education workshops, research, legal clinics, educational charla, and then show off what you learned in a mooting activity. So if you're interested in um, rebooting or starting a chapter, you could become a chapter president and work with our campus chairperson to reinstate or start a chapter. You could run a brigade or tell a brigade or go on a brigade with another university. If you're interested in business, water, public health, or legal empowerment brigades, you can talk to Nicole at the end of the meeting or also email us or message us on Instagram. And then Nicole's going to talk about the expectations and what you get out of GB. Um, so essentially, we let you guys just like pick how much you want to be involved. Um, but we do hope that you come to like our meetings every week, uh, if you can, mm -hmm. um, and then try to make friends with each other, come to the fundraisers and the volunteer nights, um, and our social events, which we will eventually plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then also when you participate in fundraisers, you can earn points and the points differ between what fundraiser it is, how long you've been there, um, et cetera. So basically you can submit how long you were there, what you did, um, and then you can earn points for it. And then those points will go towards um, like money off your brigade at the end of the year. So when we divide up the fundraising money, whoever helped get us fundraising money gets more of the fundraising money essentially. Um, so that's pretty much it. And there's a picture of us at our volunteer night with mustard seed last year. Uh, it was a Christmas dinner. It's pretty fun. Um, and then what you guys get out of it is um, you guys make friends who I would hope at least um, you have something in common with. Um, I met one of my best friends in this club. Um, this is a picture of us on our first brigade. It was super fun. I highly encourage you to go. Um, but essentially, you get a really cool experience. It's a great thing to talk about. Um, and you get to get real life experience in your field, assuming one of the brigades aligns with your field. Um, and you get to shadow professionals. Um, you can learn about other countries. So like this year, we're going to Guatemala. So we'll learn quite a bit about Guatemala during our meetings. Um, you get to travel and then it also looks really good on a resume so if you're trying to get into med school or something this is, this is a good thing <laughs> um and then especially the exact positions because leadership goals are always good to have um yeah and so i'm standing up here but um one of our past members has sent us a video um that she asked us to play for you guys um just about her experience in Global Brigades. You wanna play that? No? Sorry, my technical difficulties. We see the start role, and I was asked to speak to you a little bit about my experience with Global Brigades. Unfortunately, I was in Vancouver now and it wasn't easy for me to come and speak to you in person. So I thought I'd make a video instead and just share some of my experiences. So I was involved in the Brigades from 2016 to 2020 as a volunteer. And then I also spent two years as the vice president and I was in charge of logistics. And I believe I heard about both of the plays first from the Islam day, and I do imagine people who are on the defense and on the rest of history. So I went on three global brigades, uh, all medical degrees, and I went to Honduras twice, and I went to Nicaragua once. 
And that is also able to participate in public health days and a water day, a water day day as well. And it's really hard for me to talk about the day specific one memory or one trip because I feel like I have so many wonderful memories from the days and some events that we did in Victoria. And uh, I just made some really wonderful friends through the days. Um, but I think, I mean, my first brigade, I think, always sticks out to me the most. And I remember how my first brigade was during Shabbat, there was this boy who was participating and he was just being kind of out of sorts. And then later he went to see the ophthalmologist and have his vision checked. And it turned out that he had really poor vision. Um, his vision was like a negative 10, I think, in both eyes. So, you know, very, very negative. And um, he gave him glasses, which I was like, the best we could, got the better fit or the closest description. And he became a completely different child. Um, he was suddenly like, smiling and participating. And uh, yeah, he just made me just not smiling. And his parents were so excited. He was like a little, you know, all the great sunshine when his poor bitch teacher disconnected. So it's just really amazing to see the impact glasses can have for someone who's never had a vision check and never run the hospital and probably needed them for most of their life. Um, and yeah, I still have other stories I can tell you. I just felt like I learned so much on that first brigade and uh, kind of carried out with these little sentiments of the community in Central America are very special. I think we can learn a lot about community and culture and cleaning the food community from the small communities that we just had to create. So I think my learned or one of the strengths and reasons I stayed involved in global disease, um, regardless of outside of all the amazing people we do is just as an organization, I really like that they try to be sustainable. They hire local people who continue to work year round outside of the brigades, which might be local and have a band aid solution, but then they keep that work going all year round and they're really focused on sustainability and communities becoming more and more independent. So I really like that. Um, and then I, my regret is that I didn't participate in global brigades until my last year of university. Um, I didn't really cover the club sooner. And there really was no time to do that. So I guess a little bit about me. I'm currently a third year medical student at UC, and I feel like global brigades definitely influenced my interest in medicine and in global health. Many of my classmates uh, were involved in global brigades, and many people in GB have pursued careers in healthcare and dentistry and medicine, nursing, you, know, you name it. Yeah, I would strongly encourage you to consider participating in global brigades, whether it's in Victoria and the Portia Club and all the great work they're doing. Or hopefully even more brigades. And I I hope it will have a huge impact on you as a person, as maybe a future healthcare provider, um, but just as a learner, a wonderful experience. And I think it's wonderful to see other teachers and to also help out where we can. I know we can all participate in the community and the brigades. It's a big deal to me to talk where we can. That's me, again, I'm Suzanne. Um, well, I'll pop my comments up to the phone. Please feel free to reach out and ask any questions about the days if you have any. And it comes out kind of early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Um, oh, okay. okay. Now, Jake is going to talk about our medical brigade to Guatemala. So just a bit more about like the purpose of a medical brigade. Uh, basically, we're running a seven day pop up clinic in communities with no access to medical care. Um, and these are kind of like the different stations and things that they'll have access to at the clinic and also some other stuff we do. So triage i guess is kind of like the first step of the clinic um you'll work 
basically what the translator is positioning. And you basically consultation to kind of determine what their needs are. Um, OBGYN is a uh, gynecology station that's exclusive for female volunteers who get to observe a pap smear. Um, the dental stations, there will also be dentists there, so you can uh, shadow the dentists. And there's also a couple basic tasks you get to perform. Optometry is the station that's a bit more involved. Um, that's when you actually get trained on how to use the machine that can give people prescriptions, and then we can dole out prescriptions with the glasses um, that we have collected. Uh, pharmacy, um, I think we work on organizing and um, collecting all the medications, well, organizing the medication that all the physicians bring, um, and all the drugs that we give out at the clinic are sold for wholesale, so they're much more affordable, but at the same time, it's more of a sustainable model than just giving them out free. Charla is education, so part of what we do on Brigade is, is education, which is really contributes to the sustainability aspect of it, so that's um, children's and adult education, um, so the kids side of things, you'd be teaching the kids like uh, proper hand washing, toothbrush, just basic personal hygiene, um, and similar things to adults. Uh, go to the next slide. I think it's stuck in. Okay. So this is just some facts on Guatemala. Um, there's 17 partners communities in Guatemala that Global Gates is working with. Um, close to 6,000 community members um, and about 10% of the world population of the community we work with basically have no safe access to drinking water. And then about 45%, um, they don't have basic access to safely managed sanitation facilities. So you can tell it's a really in need um, rural country. And there's less than three physicians for 10,000 people. So that's a big, Kind of disparity. Um, and yeah, just the common sources of income there are agriculture, fishing, day laboring, just basic kind of laboring, skilled laboring jobs. I think I just stuck this slide in. So the initial deposit, which is kind of like, I guess, your commitment to going on brigade, that's like really the only commitment of this club. As really, that's due January 30th, so not until next semester. Um, that's going to be a $150 down deposit. Um, the travel donation goal, so that's something we'll vote collectively and pay for. That'll be done on uh, March. And then the final donation goal is due on April 23rd, so I think that's about two weeks before we go on for gate. Um, yeah, and those are just some numbers. So the sustainable donation goal, if we get above 15 volunteers, the Total, like the final donation goal, excluding flights, is going to be eight, about 1800 bucks. Um, if we don't make that 15 volunteers, it's going to be a little more, and we'll probably have to partner with another chapter's brigade. Cool. All right. Andy is going to talk about Victoria Partnerships. Hey, everyone. Um, one thing that I love about Global Brigade is not only um, we not only get to work together, but we also work with other local charities in Victoria. And that includes um nope, sorry. That includes backpack buddies. And what they do, they provide like foods for um kids who are in need, like school programs. And what we do, we have volunteer nights where we help pack foods and help unload supplies for them to make for them to distribute it. And next, we have Soap for Hope. That's another charity that we do. And we help volunteer. And what they do is provide hygiene packs to like food banks or school programs or even transitional homes. And one of the goals is to make sure everyone in the community has uh, good hygiene. And next, we have the Mustard Seed. That's one of my favorite events. Um, it takes place in uh, the church in downtown Victoria. And what they do is basically provide food banks for um, everyone nearby homeless shelters. 
And if you guys are interested in taking the MCAT, we do have a, um, we're partnered with Prep 101 who give our volunteers a $250 off discounts. And another thing that's not covered, um, we're gonna have, in order to help aid in the areas with, that are less privileged, we do need to fundraise money for our brigade to raise enough money for to send the medical supplies and to send certain mm -hmm. supplies in our clinics. And so we're gonna be having a Krispy Kreme donut fundraiser on October 18th. And I'll set out a sign up link for volunteers to help out. And another thing is, um, yeah, that's it so far. Thank you. All right. So we don't have much going on in the next week. Um, just gonna be meeting here, same time, same place. And there's our contact info. If you have any questions, you can ask now or you can Instagram or email us. Hi, Jake. <laughs> yeah, this is not like, 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 Per person. Per person. So if we have five to 15 volunteers, it'll be 2,080 per person. If we have 15 to 39 volunteers, it's 1,820 per person. But that will come down substantially with fundraising money. <laughs> yeah. And then the flight cost is in addition to that. But then again, this is the year we have the most fundraising money. So if you want to go, this is probably the cheapest year to do so. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyone else? I feel like I should start. Does anyone have any questions on the data from here? No. Okay. If you don't want to speak in front of the group. Oh, no, I have the chat open on my phone. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just have a question about the engineering brigade. Yeah. Oh. oh. Um. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to. Hello. Can you hear me? I got nothing. Can you type it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can go. Yeah, it's yeah. recorded. Okay. Um, I guess I have one more question. Uh, so you said the deposits do like January 30th. Yeah. So like, there'll be a sign up some point for the Yeah. So um. If you are interested in going to Brigade, we'll have you sign up for one thing. Well, we get like this up in our account. So it's basically a dashboard that will show you a summary of the Brigade and like the cost associated with it. So you can we'll just um, sign up through there and then just pay it online through that portal. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Cool. Jacob is not I like that. Thank you. Oh, you recruit your other friends too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, people who don't go to school here can also go. Yeah. So someone took their parents once <laughs> because there weren't enough volunteers. So, um, yeah, the Zoom question was Is there information on the Engineering Brigade? Um, not yet. We haven't planned it yet. So, eventually probably sometime in the next by the end of october <laughs> yeah um yeah is that it questions comments concerns no
Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for coming, everyone.